take one. Hi, my name is Oliver Lucanus. I'm the imaging specialist with the Fish and Forest Project based out of the University of McGill in Montreal, Canada. I'm in Brazil on the Rio Xingu with two of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Margaret Kalaska from the Applied Remote Sensing Laboratory at McGill and Dr. Leandro Meio de Sousa at the Ichthyology Laboratory uh, based out of Altamira here on the Xingu in Brazil. Uh, we are here to investigate the connection between the environmental change and uh, the effect it has on endemic species of fish and other animals. And Margaret, what are we going to be doing from the air tomorrow? So the first thing is we're going to create a three-dimensional model from the drone. And this is going to allow us to look at the rapids in very fine detail and take a look at the different types of habitats that we can see there. And these data we're going to then compare to historical satellite imagery, which gives us a nearly near 30-year record from which we can deduce land cover change, how the forest cover and the terrain has changed around these rapids. So Leandro, what's going to be your goal tomorrow in the water? Well, there are several things to look for, but we are especially interested in a stingray, Potemul trigon leopoldi. It's a black stingray endemic to Xingu. That's beautiful fish, gets large, and there's golden, sometimes reddish dots on it, bright. That's beautiful. And also, there's a tiny fish, not so tiny, but uh, a fish that's a Synaptolemus latofasciatus. It's a unique fish also is black with red rings yes something like that so it's black with red rings and it's adapted to live in rapids so it feeds in a unique way up uh, it has a upturned mouth and it feeds on invertebrates that are beneath the rocks so it's really interesting and not commonly see seen around. The Xingu River is the fourth largest river basin in the Amazon and is the largest clear water tributary of that basin. It drops from uh, 800 meters elevation to about 5 meters in its confluence with the Amazon. This gradient of altitude adds to a sequence of rapids and waterfalls like you can see here. And the river is also a shallow river compared to the others. And this, uh, being a clear water river the, and a shallow river, the sunlight is able to reach the bottom and there is a lot of primary production in the, the river. So you have a lot of algae and invertebrates and sponges and that's the, food, the basing of the food chain for a lot of fishes. And that's one of the reasons there is so many diversity on it. Also, the rocky bottom uh, adds complexity to the habitat and you can see a lot of specialized fishes living under specialized or unique underwater habitats. 90% uh, of the river runs over some of the oldest rock formation of the Brazilian Shield, mostly gneiss and granite rock. Uh, this causes incredible complexity of structures at the bottom and that has given rise to this unusual biodiversity. Uh, we hope to explain this all, all a little bit better with pictures and videos over the next week, so stick with us. On this expedition we collected ground truth data consisting of GPS points and photographs that allow us to characterize the various land covers such as old growth protected forest, pasture land primarily for cattle, agriculture fields mostly for soy plantation, mining and the world's third largest hydroelectric plant. Between the upper tributaries of the Xingu River past the town of Sao Felix and between Sao Felix and Altamira, there are some areas of protected forest through a national park and indigenous land. Satellite imagery such as the landside images on the screen provide us with a near 30-year record of how the land cover has changed in the area. Higher resolution satellite images also allow us to determine the seasonal changes of areas that are going to be flooded in the wet season or exposed during the dry season. These images can be combined with the drone footage 
in order to scale up models of habitat extent and complexity over time. This aerial footage from the Inspire One captures ongoing burning of the Amazon forest as the land is being cleared for other land uses. So Oliver, how has the use of drones changed throughout this project? Well, on our first fish and forest expedition in 2014 to northern Tanzania, we used a small DJI drone to map the habitats and the surrounding forest cover of several endemic cichlid species so that we could make some determination about their vulnerability. Uh, on this expedition, I'm going to be flying the DJI Inspire 1 and Leandro is going to be flying a Phantom 3. And we're going to produce 3D models and map a lot of habitat of the endemic fishes of the Shingu. Our models are going to have a half centimeter resolution, which is a technology uh, right at the top uh, compared to a satellite or any other kind of model. We've been using DJI drones because we find they are quite easy to use and the quality of both the camera and the gimbals is very high. We're getting very good technical support and the main thing is that they are very much compatible with the modern mapping software. So these models are put together from hundreds of still frames that must be stitched together uh, in external software uh, to create a 3D model that you can then spin in various angles and take measurements from any distance or any given points between them. Let's start by showing you how this area looks like from the air and how we use drones to produce the images that are used to manufacture the 3D models that are going to be used in the research later on. Here at the Cachoeira Grande do Iriri, the Iriri River joins up with the Rio Xingu. The river first forms a very large series of waterfalls that then drop into a channel before joining up with the Xingu in the distance. You can see here that there are lots of small channels and small runs of water that are exposed in the dry season. So all these rocks to our right eventually get covered in water and form a complex series of habitats for more fish. When the rains begin in October, all of this will be covered in water and the waterfall will become really massive. This footage filmed from a DJI Phantom is showing the Inspire 1 producing a 3D model of the Iriri Rapids. So the Inspire 1 here is taking a grid pattern and producing hundreds of still frames that are then used to build the 3D model. Only a handful of boat pilots know how to navigate the ever-changing channels of the Shingu and changing locations of treacherous rocks that appear and submerge depending on the seasonal water levels. How exactly they keep track of where the dangerous rocks are over hundreds of kilometers of river that is constantly changing is still a mystery to all of us. Plecos, catfishes from the family Loricaridae, also uh, cichlids adapted to fast water flowing. So the body is elongated, the mouth is downward to pick invertebrates on the rocks. It's really unique fish. This is uh, endemic to Xingu and was recently described. 
So its name is Teleocycla Breca, it means black, really nice fish. And we have here armored catfishes or plecos, so they have a particular spiny way of living. So the body is armored with spines, so the males defend the territory, they are really angry. <laughs> and it has this sucker mouth, so they attach to the rocks and they grasp things. And there is a lot of variation in the teeth, so some teeth are adapted to pick invertebrates also, and others like these are more tiny and more numerous and they grasp and eat algae and detritus. So this one is an uh, interesting one, it's an undescribed species yet, so it's the genus Parancistus, but it's not doesn't have a name yet. And it's found only in these waterfalls in Italy and also in the Shingo. It's a good good fish. Not really colorful but it's a nice guy. As in you, you can see also the fishes vary so these are the same species but different st uh, stages of life. So sometimes the youngs are more colorful that's not a really good example but in some other parts you can you have a really beautiful yellow edge on the fins The purpose of this expedition is not to preserve fishes, just to register where they live and the kind of rocks, and so we will release all the fish. The silver dollar is a relative of the piranha. Any rock turned over in the river quickly gathers a crowd of opportunists looking to eat exposed insect larvae, smaller fish or sponges. Various characins are present anywhere in the river. All fish here have body shapes adapted to life in the current. Smaller fish is looking to grab food out of the open water column and the larger anostomids in this case, with jaws powerful enough to feed on snails, sponges or insect larvae. Barian sisters, like giant aquatic cows, are scraping off algae and biocover along the bottom. Black piranha has become aware of the increased activity here and comes looking for a chance to feed on what has attracted the fish or bite the fins of the others. The polka dot stingray is one of the most spectacular fish of the Shingu. These freshwater rays hunt fish, crabs and mollusks at night. This is a juvenile Potamotrigon dorbini, or one of the sand-colored rays in the Shingo River. This is still a baby, it already has a stinger, so you don't want to step on one of these, especially when it's adult. Uh, these guys are living over sandy bottoms, so this pattern is a perfect camouflage for these young guys. And if somebody gets too close, they can bury in the sand with only the eyes sticking out.
hope that our short documentary has brought you a little closer to the Xingu River and its, and its fishes. Uh, we're now going to try something new. Uh, we will try to broadcast live directly from the UAV onto the internet.